Good morning and welcome to all the attendees. We are pleased to, to introduce you to the first two webinars of the project, Sustainable Civil Society Dialogue for Sustainable Development, implemented by Kyoto Club as lead applicant, together with our colleagues on the Energy Environmental Association of Izmir as partner. Uh, today we start the group one dedicated to sustainable cities and sustainable development with the first module on air quality and sustainable mob mobility. I think it's the time to leave the stage to our panelists now. <laughs> and uh, uh, they all work for the National Research Council of Italy in the Institute of Atmospheric Pollution Research, which cooperates with the Kyoto Club among the activities of the Sustainable Mobility Working Group. Mr. Francesco Petracchini and Mrs. Laura Tomassetti have been requested today of the Ministry of Transportation for a meeting, so they are not able to participate today. And uh, today the, the webinar have a little bit change on the structure. Anyway, luckily Mr. Valeria Rizza and Mr. Valerio Paolini will cover the parts too. So we double thank them to their cooperation. Uh, now, I think I can leave the stage to Valerio for the first part of the webinar. Thank you very much, Valerio. I give you this, the screen. So, um, good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to this webinar. Uh, this first part will be dedicated to uh, best practices on sustainable mobility. And um, I am Valerio Paolini from the Institute of Atmospheric Pollution Research. Just uh, before beginning, a few words uh, about my institution. We have uh, four operating units uh, um, in Italy. Our mission is uh, the knowledge and understanding of uh, air quality and air pollution. We work on uh, several research fields related to air quality. And the, the most important uh, research fields are the urban and industrial area pollution, the emerging air contaminants, and uh, the um, analysis of uh, um, the um, emerging pollutants uh, in the industrial emissions, the, um, the um, pollutant cycles at uh, hemispheric level, and uh, the mercury um, inventory and also uh, the development of uh, high performance sensors and uh, sensing devices for air quality the connection between uh, climate change and uh, air pollution and uh, the development of health ob observation techniques devices and methods which is uh, basically the use of uh, data from satellites for uh, the understanding of air quality Finally, um, other research fields are related to data interoperability and uh, environmental knowledge. And finally, the knowledge transfer to the policy makers. Um, we have uh, a dedicated uh, research unit inside of the uh, Italian Ministry of the Environment for this specific task. We are uh, currently part of several um, uh, international uh, uh, working groups on uh, earth observation. Uh, we are part of the United Nations Environmental uh, Agency, and we are the um, um, the, the reference uh, point for mercury air transport and freight. We also work with uh, several uh, public and uh, private companies for uh, developing projects. Uh, on um, air quality and sustainable mobility and we are currently coordinating the Aeroplanet program. The Aeroplanet program uh, will be the European network for observing our uh, um, changing planet and this program is, really, is divided into four main pillars which are the smart cities and resilient societies the resource efficiency and uh, environmental management, the global changes and environmental threats, and the uh, polar areas and natural resources. We um, have several 
uh, projects uh, at the national, European and international level. And uh, among them, I will show you uh, some uh, selected examples uh, um, related to um, sustainable mobility. And then I will show you um, other uh, best uh, practices uh, uh, that we have selected uh, from uh, uh, several European uh, cities. Uh, we have recently um, signed uh, some agreements with Italian ministries, uh, an important agreement uh, with the Ministry of the Environment for the asbestos detection by satellite uh, using artificial intelligence, and then the development of methods for its treatment, and an agreement with the Ministry of Infrastructure uh, specifically on uh, smart mobility. Uh, just a selection of uh, uh, regional projects. We have a lot, but uh, I like to show you the Selva project, which is in cooperation with the uh, administration of Lazio region. In this project, in this Selva project, we are developing a biomass inventory and a long-term energy plant plan and uh, we uh, are now developing a strategy based on the uh, infrastructure and possible uh, mobility solution for the um, harvesting and transportation of uh, solid biomass for energy purposes. Another important uh, uh, project, regional project uh, of our institution, which is uh, related to sustainable mobility, is the SET project which is ship emission treatment in arbors. And in this project, we are developing um, a device which is able to uh, collect and remove the uh, emission of pollutants from uh, uh, ships in the harbors. And we are developing this in uh, Trieste, which is northeastern Italy. And now I would like, I, I am pleased to, uh, to talk you um, about the Mobilitaria project. The Mobilitaria project um, is uh, being carried out uh, since uh, 2016 by uh, my institution in cooperation with Kyoto Club. The objective of Mobilitaria is uh, the study of um, air quality and uh, mobility in cities. Uh, the study of the connection between uh, uh, air quality, air pollution, and uh, the, um, um, the mobility of cities is uh, the main part of the study. We started um, this uh, project Mobilitaria uh, focusing our attention on uh, 14 um, Italian cities. We selected them, uh, they are not the, the, the largest in terms of inhabitants, but they are the, uh, the metropolitan uh, cities, which is a definition uh, um, of, of um, recently uh, applied. And so the, the, the main, the largest uh, cities uh, uh, of Italy are part of this group. There is Rome and Milan, but also um, there are um, uh, other cities like uh, Catania and uh, Messina in Sicily, which are smaller, but uh, they are all metropolitan cities. The, during the first uh, part of the Mobilitaria project, we collected uh, um, the historical data from uh, 2006 to 2016, uh, each year, each uh, monitoring station. Uh, so we collected uh, the, the data on uh, uh, PM10, PM2.5, and uh, uh, nitrogen dioxide uh, into uh, all the stations for all the years uh, for all these 14 cities. Uh, here you can see a um, graphical uh, representation of this uh, um, um, data. In this case, this is the last year. And you can see in the yellow the nitrogen dioxide, and in blue the PM10. The PM2.5 is uh, not represented in this figure, 
and you can see that uh, um, we have uh, several exceedances on the uh, limit um, the you can see the the red line uh, represents the uh, limit so we have several cities exceeding this limit uh, regarding no2 uh, we have exceedances for naples milan turin and rome and also uh, for the case of turin which is a very specific uh, geographical uh, um, configuration we have also uh, the exceedances uh, for the PM10, but um, this um, this part related to air quality um, can also be discussed in the second part of this webinar by my colleague Valeria Rizza. I will focus uh, my presentation on uh, sustainable mobility. So um, another um, another important part of this mobilitaria project is related to the study of uh, um, mobility in the cities um, recently last year we extended the study also to european cities but uh, first um, i ask you to look at the uh, bottom uh, figure again so uh, we are again in italy and uh, we collected several data on um, the uh, the state of mobility in cities in this in the 14 italian cities um, an important information is the motorization rate. Motorization rate is uh, the uh, number of cars per uh, one inhabitants. So you can see numbers on the left. Uh, for example, uh, the, the, the city with the highest motorization rate here is uh, in Italy is Catania. Uh, and they have almost uh, 700 uh, inhabitants 700 cars per inhabitants okay sorry um, the uh, red line is the italian average the blue line is the uh, european average you can see that all italian cities i'm uh, uh, still um, talking about the bottom uh, figure all italian um, cities are uh, um high have a motorization rate higher than uh, the european average on the um now we can pass to the european uh, uh, motorization rate here you can see on the uh, top figure we collected uh, uh, the motorization rate for uh, amsterdam berlin brussels budapest dublin uh, london madrid paris Prague, uh, Stockholm, and Vienna, and you can see that uh, they are they have a um, motorization rate lower than uh, the uh, Italian average, and uh, um, uh, we still have a relatively high motorization rate, for example, for Prague in the uh, Czech Republic. But for instance, you can see um, I would like to do this comparison. You can see Paris, which is the capital of France, with the motorization rate, which is uh, almost uh, 250, while uh, in Rome, which is the, um, the capital of Italy, um, the motorization rate is uh, the double, uh, almost 600. Um, what we did is also a comparison between uh, the... Um, uh, the um, uh, air quality data and uh, the um, uh, mobility data uh, between European and uh, um, uh, Italian cities. Here you can see the exceedances of uh, uh, NO2 um, for both um, um, Italian cities on the left and for uh, European cities uh, on the right. Um, you, Valeria Rizza will uh, talk about the air quality again, but uh, I would just like to point out that uh, um, mobility, policies, mobility policies are very important uh, for uh, the um, uh, improvement of air quality, but also um, it is important to remark, I would like to remark also that the um, 
geographical conditions can also affect the um, um, the, the state of air quality. For instance, in Turin, uh, very good uh, um, uh, policies on mobility have been implemented, and despite this, due to uh, geographical conditions and uh, a very poor uh, mixing uh, uh, of um, uh, air, uh, the air quality of Turin is still uh, bad, despite the good uh, mobility policies. But in general, in general, the cities who implemented the best mobility policies are also the cities with uh, the, uh, the major improvements in air quality during uh, this decade. Um, the same for PM10. Here, situation is even more uh, uh, clear. You can see uh, Turin and Milan uh, with the high exceedances of PM10 mainly due to the fact that uh, these cities are inside the Po Valley and uh, uh, geographical condition strongly affects the PM10 pollution despite their very good uh, uh, mobility policies. Uh, anyway, also European cities like Paris have uh, uh, still uh, to deal with uh, PM10 exceedances. For example, in the case of Paris, you can see the um, Year, uh, yearly uh, limit, uh, which is uh, uh, 35, is exceeded uh, in Paris, it is um, doubled, it is 80. Uh, so, um, uh, so still uh, um, measures are needed to uh, tackle this problem. What we um, did uh, during the Mobilitaria project uh, is also the um, collection of uh, several data on uh, how people uh, move inside their city. Um, generally, we report this information in terms of uh, uh, model split. The model split is uh, one way to um, um, describe the, uh, the, the mobility of a city, um, basically how it works. Uh, it's quite easy. We report the uh, percentage of uh, um, uh, use of car, um, scooters, pu public transportation, uh, foot, bike, and other. So you can see in uh, light blue, light blue is uh, uh, the percentage of use of cars. So you can see, for example, in uh, Cagliari or Reggio Calabria, a very high use of cars and uh, for example in Milan uh, there is a very low use of um, um, car of cars um, I'm sorry that uh, the uh, legend is in Italian but uh, the uh, Mobilitaria project is, is, an, is, an, is an Italian project for the representation of uh, data uh, in um, uh, on uh, mobility of Italian cities. But I, I will explain you the meaning of these uh, colors. In, um, as I told you, the, the car is the light blue and the orange is uh, scooters. The cities with the uh, very, um, with the highest use of cars are also the cities with the lowest uh, use of public transportation. Public transportation is uh, uh, represented in uh, gray. So you can see that in Milan, we have a low use of car and we have a high use of public transportation. As I told you, uh, Cagliari and uh, Reggio Calabria uh, have uh, um, high use of car and indeed they have a very low use of public transportation. It means that uh, low quality uh, public transportation um, move people to, to use uh, the cars more. Um, in uh, yellow you can see the, uh, the percentage of people uh, uh, moving by the feet and uh, in uh, dark blue the use of bikes. Of course uh, bikes um, are mostly used in uh, uh, some cities than in others. Uh, it also depends on uh, the, the structure of the city itself. But you can see that in Milan, in Florence, in Bologna, bikes are uh, 
uh, an import, have an uh, uh, have an important share, uh, even uh, higher than ten uh, percent. In green, finally, <laughs> in green uh, there is other ways, and you can note that uh, the first line, Venice, Venice have a very high percentage of uh, green other. What is other in Venice? Uh, of course, it is uh, um, the um, transportation through water. Venice is a city uh, which is built inside several islands, and so uh, almost 15% of people uh, move using uh, water transportation. Just a curiosity. What is the situation in European cities? You can see that uh, the uh, percentage of use of cars is very lower. Uh, cars are uh, again represented in light blue and uh, we have a maximum uh, in Brussels with the, which is still below 50% and uh, we have very good examples. For example, in Paris, the use of cars is below 20%, which is a very good uh, result. Uh, this means that uh, public transportation is one of the um, uh, is the preferred solution for transportation by people. And indeed, you can see public transportation in uh, uh, it is orange or even red. I don't know. Maybe maybe orange. Um, in Paris, the share of public transportation is very high. And also uh, the use of feet in green, in grey, and uh, bikes in yellow. Bikes are mainly used in uh, Copenhagen and in Amsterdam. This is an example on how we represent data uh, on uh, mobility during the Mobilitaria project. Uh, you can see, for example, this is the case of Milan and Naples. We report the um, number of vehicles, the uh, distribution of the environmental class. Um, you can see from Euro 0 to Euro 6. And also we report the um, number of vehicles divided by um, fueling, uh, which is benzina, gasolio, GPL means uh, uh, gasoline, uh, gasoil, uh, liquefied petrol gas, methano is methane, you can understand it, and uh, hybrid and electric. And um, now uh, in this final part of the, my presentation, I will show you uh, some selected uh, some selected examples of European best practices uh, um, on um, sustainable mobility. I will start with bike infrastructures because bike infrastructures uh, are um, um, an important investment uh, by municipalities. But uh, once um, people are able to move by bike. Uh, the, uh, the general uh, state of mobility of a city can strongly improve. Copenhagen, in, with this regard, is uh, a, a very is a leading city. Uh, they have uh, um, 150 uh, million euros invested in the last decade, and uh, they have, for example, a dedicated uh, train line for bike users and uh, they are uh, developing a connection uh, for bikes with uh, uh, Malmo. Malmo, um, I don't know if you know it, uh, is on the other side of the uh, Baltic Sea um, from Copenhagen. Uh, on the other side of the Baltic Sea, there is uh, another city in Sweden, which is called Malmo. And uh, uh, lots of people um, live in Copenhagen and work in Malmo and vice versa. Uh, so the mobility between uh, uh, these two um, cities um, is very important. There is a, a bridge and there is a train, but uh, a specific connection uh, for bike infrastructure um, using bike to uh, cross the sea and uh, reach the Sweden uh, has been developed, is going to be developed by the Copenhagen municipality. And um, I also like to point out the figure on the left, which is the Mar the, um, the the parks of the Myers Tower. 
if you have uh, visited Copenhagen, uh, you will probably uh, remember this tower. And uh, inside the, the tower, uh, there is um, uh, there are there, there are uh, 950 uh, bicycle uh, slots. Another uh, very good example of uh, um, development of bike infrastructures is given by the city of Amsterdam. Amsterdam has been a, a leading city for uh, carrying out uh, tests on um, several solutions for uh, bike uh, transportation. You can see the figure on the, uh, the, um, the upper figure. Um, they have uh, developed um, a specific uh, uh, traffic lights for bikes and also waiting places uh, for bikes are ahead cars. And um, this uh, is a very simple uh, measure which can be implemented in every city and it uh, strongly uh, improves the, the quality of uh, uh, bike infrastructures with a very small investment from the municipality. Next steps uh, will include uh, uh, the development of new bike bridges. You know Amsterdam like Venice and Stockholm is a city which is um, built uh, inside several islands so uh, people have to move from an island to another of the city and uh, there are bridges but uh, uh, new small bridges only for bikes uh, are going to be developed. Uh, boats, boats for uh, bikers are also being uh, studied and uh, uh, of course um, uh, the administration is going to uh, fund the construction of uh, other parking areas for bikes. Now, um, among the um, bike infrastructures, there is uh, the promotion of bike sharing. Bike sharing, uh, I mean, of course, it is not um, uh, it is not the municipality that have to um, to, the, to to carry out. Uh, the bike sharing, but uh, the municipality has to uh, promote the diffusion of bike sharing from private companies. Um, for example, uh, London uh, promoted the um, Santander cycles. Uh, actually, um, it is um, already being tested uh, from Bixie in uh, Montreal, uh, Canada. Uh, they started in um, tw 2010 with uh, very uh, limited, we uh, um, a very limited infrastructure. They um, they had 315 bikes with uh, uh, stations in eight uh, districts of London, but today uh, they reached uh, 8,000 bikes and uh, 400 uh, stalls for uh, bike for bicycles. Okay, um, bike sharing, uh, another important example is uh, Paris. And uh, uh, this is a very good uh, best practice that uh, I hope will be replicated in uh, uh, some Italian cities. In um, two years ago, the Velib, the uh, company for the um, bike sharing of the Paris city, became Velib Metropole. So the um, uh, electric bike uh, grid was extended to uh, 60 uh, municipalities in the metropolitan areas. This means that uh, you can take uh, the bike uh, inside the city of Paris and you can use it not only, not only inside the city of Paris, but uh, you can also use it to reach the uh, small towns uh, um, in the metropolitan area of Paris and it is a very good improvement and again a very small investment um, uh, uh, a very simple measure with a very high impact. Another um, important infrastructure uh, to be considered uh, for uh, sustainable mobility is of course the charging uh, stations Charging stations for electric cars are uh, the limiting, um, um, the limiting um, 
points for the uh, development of electric mobility. Uh, people are more uh, uh, intended to buy electric cars when in their city there, there, are, uh, there is a very high number of charging stations. Uh, Sirs London is a very good example, um, not only because of the number of changing points. Charging points uh, of Sirs London are a lot, they are more than 1,000, and uh, they are going to be uh, to, 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 to double this number. But uh, um, what, what is very good from uh, Sirs London is the fact that uh, the uh, electricity is. Uh, 100% green energy. 0% uh, electricity is made by uh, carbon or uh, uh, fossil uh, fuels. They are 100% green. Uh, green means uh, uh, from uh, photovoltaic panels or uh, at least from uh, biomass burning, uh, not from fossil fuels. So it is, uh, uh, it is really zero emission mobility. Now, um, some um, uh, best practices related to uh, local public, public transportation. When you see, in my, in my slides, when you see LPT, it means uh, local public transportation. Just a few numbers uh, before starting. I um, wanted to point out uh, what will be the European market on this, because there is a very good uh, um, economical opportunity in this sector. It is still, uh, in my opinion, it is still very underestimated, but um, uh, I will give you all, only these numbers. Um, last year, no, two years ago, sorry, two years ago, um, they sailed um, 650 electric buses in Europe. And uh, interact analysis um, uh, for a CEAS for 2025 uh, that uh, 160,000 uh, electric buses will be sold per year, which is a, a very important uh, opportunity for uh, companies. Now, currently, there are uh, important uh, geographical differences. Um, for example, um, there are uh, five uh, uh, countries which alone account for uh, half of all the European uh, electric buses. Uh, the Netherlands, UK, France, Poland, and Germany um, alone, they have 50% uh, uh, of European electric buses. Uh, European, uh, well, UK is going to leave Europe, so this statistic should be uh, revised. Um, I also uh, want to point out that this uh, C40 agreement, it is an agreement signed by uh, 40 cities, including Paris, London, Copenhagen, Amsterdam, Barcelona, Berlin, Moscow, Oslo, Rome, Rotterdam, Warsaw, you can see it. You can also check on Google uh, the full list. And uh, they agreed to sign this um, uh, program uh, with two main points. They will uh, buy only zero emission buses and they will create a large zero emission zone uh, by 2030. So, uh, three examples of zero, em zero emission uh, local public transportation. Copenhagen, the best example. Uh, since last year, all new buses are already uh, zero emissions. In Paris, um, there is the following program. They started since uh, uh, 2014, though, so they started very early. Uh, they stopped to buy diesel buses and buy only hybrid or uh, CNG, which is methane, or electric buses. And they will have a completely zero emission fleet in uh, 2025. Uh, in the case of London, uh, there will be um, all uh, two floors buses will be a hybrid and then they will also, uh, you, you know, in London uh, it is typical uh, the, the use of these uh, two floor buses is in the figure on the right, you can see it. And then they will also um, have, in, uh, subsequently they will also have all one floor buses uh, 
uh, will become a hybrid. And finally, by 2037, uh, they will have a uh, um, completely uh, zero emission uh, fleet. So it is a very long term problem in London, uh, a, long, a very long term program in London. Uh, but uh, um, they have already a, a, a roadmap designed. And um, about Berlin, um, an example of uh, zero emission private mobility, because by now we have only talked about uh, the public transportation, but uh, what about the uh, private uh, mobility? In uh, Berlin, by um, June of this year, um, there will be 1,100 charging places. And uh, uh, I also want to point out that uh, Berlin uh, developed an energy and climate protection um, and uh, they will um, have no uh, fossil car in the city of Berlin by 2050. It is, uh, again, a very long-term program, but we are uh, talking uh, about uh, cities like Berlin, London are different uh, to Amsterdam or Copenhagen. There are cities like Amsterdam and Copenhagen which have already started uh, long years ago a transition uh, to a zero emission uh, mobility. Other uh, uh, cities like London or Berlin are currently um, still uh, uh, strongly dependent on fossil uh, um, cars. So the, um, the, the program must be a, a, a long-term program. Um, anyway, um, it is still a good uh, example because they are uh, uh, improving the uh, mobility uh, very fast. So, uh, an example of city which has already, as I told you, uh, already a good uh, uh, mobility is Copenhagen. Here we are talking about uh, uh, private mobility again. Currently, they already are 85% zero emission, meaning that 85% of people have electric cars or electric bikes, or uh, uh, they move by public transportation with the zero emission. By 2025, all private cars will be zero emission. So you can see the difference between Copenhagen and Berlin. In Berlin, by uh, 2050 in Copenhagen by 2025 so they will be faster but uh, why uh, the reason is that Copenhagen is uh, uh, already at a good point they already are 85 percent zero emission and by uh, 2025 they will also have 100 percent of private uh, uh, non-cars vehicles uh, by alternate fuels um, so uh, what does it mean that it means that cars will become uh, electric. Uh, other uh, vehicles, for example, trucks, uh, they are difficult to be uh, fu fueled with uh, electric batteries because they have uh, very long distances to be um, performed. So uh, the solution in this case will be the use of alternate fuels. Alternate fuels are biomethane and biodiesel. These uh, fuels are obtained by, by biomass, so they are carbon neutral. They, uh, they burn fuels, so they emit uh, CO2, but this CO2 is inside a, a carbon loop, uh, which is uh, uh, overall a, a carbon neutral process. And uh, uh, finally, it is important to talk about the uh, uh, logistics. So uh, we talked about bikes, we talked about uh, the uh, public transportation, and we talked about uh, the um, private uh, cars. But also uh, there are uh, companies, companies which use uh, cars, uh, companies for logistics and distribution. And uh, uh, the, um, the, the, they also must be taken into account for uh, sustainable mobility. So in uh, Paris, there is uh, uh, an example uh, of a very good uh, um, best practice. It is the uh, UTLib, 
they developed a fleet of uh, 100 electric cars for companies and they want to uh, reach uh, no diesel cars by the end of uh, 2020. In Berlin, uh, there is a very uh, a larger and more structured uh, uh, approach. Uh, the program is called uh, VELMO, uh, Business Related Electromobility. Uh, this program, uh, the VELMO program, uh, is funding low emission vehicles uh, for uh, small and medium enterprises. So if you are a small or medium enterprise uh, uh, in, um, in Berlin, you can buy a low emission vehicle um, and uh, it will be funded. Uh, sorry, there is. A, uh, okay. And uh, uh, they will fund, uh, uh, they will give you a financial support uh, for uh, these uh, um, small emission vehicles. A final um, uh, example, uh, which is a very good example, uh, is uh, the city of Amsterdam again. Um, the city of Amsterdam uh, invested a lot on uh, the um, zero emission uh, uh, logistics. First of all, they um, signed a Green Deal Zero Emission City Logistics Agreement. Uh, it, this agreement has been signed by more than uh, uh, 50 stakeholders and the objective is uh, that no emissions uh, uh, from uh, um, transportation of, of goods uh, will be uh, uh, will be in uh, 2025 and also uh, another important uh, um, program uh, still in Amsterdam is the Amsterdam logistic city hub city hub um, in this case as I told you, Amsterdam, like Stockholm or, and Venice, is a city which is built in uh, several islands and uh, they invested a lot on electric boats for uh, the uh, transportation of goods. So um, goods will be uh, transported not anymore by cars, but by uh, electric boats with uh, zero emissions. So uh, this was a final uh, example. I will uh, conclude my presentation with uh, uh, the final remarks. So uh, uh, there are uh, strong connections uh, between air quality and uh, urban mobility. If we want to improve air quality, if we want to reduce uh, uh, atmospheric pollution in cities, we have to um, improve the policy uh, of um, uh, mobility and uh, the uh, parameters to be considered are, uh, the most important parameters to be considered are the model split, which is the percentage distribution of how people uh, move in the city by private cars, by bike, or by local public transportation. Another important parameter is the motorization rate, which is the number of cars per inhabitants. And also, um, of course, the uh, local public transportation offer and demand, which must be uh, um, improved as much as possible. Um, now, I, uh, three other important remarks. Um, the bike and electric bike sharing and infrastructures, uh, they are the, the first uh, examples of best practices that I show you in Europe. Um, it is the first uh, uh, place where uh, uh, municipalities should invest uh, in order to improve uh, uh, the, uh, the mobility. Then, uh, then after the bike infrastructure, uh, the most important uh, um, topics to be addressed in the last in the in the next uh, years will be the um, the um, reducing of emissions. Uh, from uh, local public transportation. So I, sh I have shown you uh, several examples on uh, how municipalities can uh, reach this goal of uh, zero emission local public transportation. And finally, in uh, uh, next years, another important topic will be 
uh, the, the reducing of emissions from private mobility and logistics. They are the, the final examples that I have shown you. And uh, finally, uh, the, the final goal will be to reach a uh, zero emission also from private mobility and logistics. Uh, so, thank you for your attention. And uh, we have still uh, 10 minutes for questions. Okay. Okay, Valerio, thanks a lot. It's Eugenio speaking now. Um, I will leave a couple of minutes for the participants to write their questions in the question window. Um, by the way, while they write, I would like to ask you a personal question of mine, if you don't mind. Um, yes, sure. um, I would like to know, uh, you uh, it was a very interesting pr presentation, first of all, thanks a lot. Um, uh, but I would like to ask, you showed us uh, many best practices, let's say bottom-up best practices, I mean, for, for municipalities who invested in sustainable mo mo mobility. I would like to ask you about uh, the, um, uh, the top-down, let's say, best practices. Mm. So, by the way, that, how does the European Union deal with sustainable mobility in the current programming period? And if you have any information about it, or if you foresee anything for the improvements for the next programming period, 2021-2027, if you like well, to say you so. Know, you know that uh, the, um, the policies are, uh, of uh, Europe, uh, uh, the policies of the European Commission is going to be uh, developed uh, in uh, this month. So uh, they have uh, recently uh, started to show us uh, this uh, new green deal uh, from the new European Commission because uh, we have to point out that uh, the European Commission has been um, changed uh, a few months ago and uh, the new, uh, the, the, the so-called new green deal of uh, Europe uh, has been launched but uh, details are uh, have still uh, uh, to be published about the, the new Green Deal. And uh, what we see that is that uh, the European Commission will uh, mainly invest on uh, uh, promoting the transition for uh, private mobility. So there will be a lot of measures uh, for moving uh, uh, citizens to uh, electric cars or uh, uh, okay, of, of course, also public transportation, but uh, uh, most of investments uh, will be for uh, um, the uh, transition of uh, private uh, um, mobility. Mm, for the public transportation, uh, uh, the, um, the municip municipalities have to work uh, uh, with their with their own uh, uh, strength because uh, European Union will mainly, uh, w from what we see now, uh, because details. Uh, have not been uh, published still, but uh, um, there will be um, uh, fundings for, for the transition of uh, uh, private mobility, but uh, uh, there, there will not be uh, specific uh, dedicated instruments uh, uh, for uh, uh, public transportation from European Union. Of course, um, municipalities can also use the European uh, Regional Structural uh, Fund for uh, improving their um, public transportation. So in, the, in this regard, but it is the same of uh, uh, last year's, uh, there is the, the um, ESFR, okay. Okay, thank you. We have a question. Uh, there is a person who's asking, can you give starting point examples for the countries which does not have enough policy? Uh, they mean, let's say, from where municipalities out of the EU should start? Well, it depends on the um, uh, specific uh, city because uh, if, if it is a, a medium-sized city, uh, bike uh, sharing, uh, bike infrastructures uh, uh, is a very good starting point. For very large cities, uh, um, uh, they cannot be uh, um, the only solution. And then um, the uh, other starting points are as I told you, the, um, the use of uh, zero emission local public transportation, they can start with a small uh, share, a small percentage, but they can also decide to um, 
by uh, only on, uh, only for new uh, buses uh, they can start to buy only zero emission uh, buses and uh, um, another important uh, very good uh, practice uh, for developing countries is uh, the uh, introduction in in Europe they already have it in every city uh, the the creation of uh, uh, green zones inside of the center uh, inside of the city center they can uh, create green zones where only uh, low emission or zero emission cars can uh, go uh, these are the generally the starting points for uh, sustainable mobility in cities uh, we have another question uh, uh, there's a person who's asking if there are are there any incentives from municipality to the people for using electric cars uh, no no there are no um, not incentives from municipalities to uh, buy electric cars but there are uh, incentives from uh, um, a european and a national level um, there will be incentives from a european level and currently there are incentives from a national level uh, municipalities do not have uh, enough uh, financial uh, uh, budget uh, uh, for um, promoting the, the for, for um, promoting the the buying of um, uh, cars for private citizens for the case of private citizens in the case of companies as, uh, as i told you there is the example of berlin with the velmo program where they fund, uh, they, they give financial support for uh, companies, small and medium uh, companies, uh, who want to buy um, um, uh, low emission or zero emission uh, uh, vehicles. Um, it depends on the uh, financial uh, uh, possibility of the municipality. The, of course, municipalities are free to, to do uh, this, but uh, um, it is not very common. So welcome back. It's uh, 12 to 36 Turkish time. So so and I will leave the word to our second speaker who is Valeria Ririza. You see her online. Good morning to everyone. I am Valeria uh, Rizza. I am a colleague of uh, Valerio Paolini and I work for the uh, Institute of Atmospheric Pollution. Uh, okay, let's start to see why is air pollution in Europe is still a problem. Why, uh, so why is air pollution in Europe still a problem? Europe's air quality is slowly improving, but fine particulate matter and ground level ozone in particular continue to cause serious impact on Earth. Estimate point to well above 400,000 parameter depth in Europe each year due to particulate matter more than 70,000 due to nitrogen dioxide dioxide. Three out of ten of the urban population citizens are exposed to particulate matter above European Union standards and with nine out of ten exposed above World uh, Health Organization's guidelines. Um, let's see which kind of pollutant we are talking about. Air pollutant may be categorized as primary or secondary Pollutant. Primary uh, pollutants are directly emitted to the atmosphere, whereas secondary pollutants are formed in the atmosphere from precursor pollutant through chemical reaction and microphysical processes. Primary uh, pollutants include particle matter, uh, black carbon, sulfur oxides, nitrogen oxides, which includes uh, uh, both mon nitrogen monoxide and nitrogen dioxide also carbon monoxide, and then we have also methane. Uh, secondary pollutants are, um, are P particular matter formed in the atmosphere, also ozone and nitrogen oxide, dioxide, and several oxidized volatile organic compounds. Uh, most of, uh, of uh, these pollutants can be the precursor for the secondary particle matter, such as sulfur dioxide and also um, nitrogen oxide ice. Uh, so, um, what is the problem with this uh, pollutant? They can cause a lot of problems of an hour F. And 
uh, heart disease, uh, we can see that it is well documented that exposure to air pollution may lead to adverse health effects such as premature mortality and morbidity. Uh, mainly related to the respiratory and cardiovascular disease. There are a lot of uh, epidemiological studies that have shown which kind of problem they uh, can cause. Heart disease and stroke are the most common reasons for premature death attributable to air pollution, followed by lung disease and lung cancer. The International Agency for Research on Cancer has classified air pollution in general as well as particle matter as carcinogenic. So this is important. We can see that the um, results of the health impact assessment related to the pollutant previously cited are shown in this table. And we can say that uh, 41 countries listed for uh, 112,000 premature deaths attributed to the PM 2.5 exposure. 71,000 can be attributed to the nitrogen dioxide exposure and 14,100 to uh, ozone exposure. In the, this is in, the, um, in uh, all the 41 countries. For the 28 European Union, we can see that the premature death attributed to, to PM 2.5 can be, uh, they are 374,000. Instead, for the dioxide, uh, nitro, nitrogen dioxide are 68,000 and the premature death attributable to the ozone exposure uh, are 14,000. So that's why it is too important. Um, in this graph, we, these figures gives an overview of each sector's contribution to total emission for all the pollutants that I have cited before. Um, the road transport sector uh, was the most significant contribution to the total um, dioxide nitrogen emission. And the second large contributor to black carbon, uh, mon carbon monoxide, the primary uh, PM 2.5. Uh, we can see in this figure that the emission for all primary and precursor pollutant contribution uh, to the contribute to the ambient air concentration uh, decreased between 2000 and uh, 2017 in the 28 European contribution. In this uh, table, uh, in this figure, we can see that the most uh, contribution to the total emission, uh, for example, for the PM 2.5 uh, is the uh, road uh, transport transport and also for the black carbon uh, for the black carbon and the carbon oxide this is the second contribution sector let's see what's happened in europe and what is the policies that we have uh, adopted um, the european uh, clean air policy is based on ambient air quality directives that uh, set us, uh, that uh, they set uh, for protection human health and for the environment. This directive all require member states to assess air quality in all their territories and to adopt and implement air quality plans to improve air quality where standards are not met and to maintain it where the air quality is good. The, uh, we can refer to the directives of the 20, 2004 and 2008, and uh, they regulate the pollutants uh, such as PM10, PM2.5, and also the toxic metal, metals. Uh, another uh, policy is uh, to establish in the national emission siring directive, which requires member states to develop national air pollution control programs to comply with the emission production commitments. So this is the principal policy that the, Union, the European Union adopted. 
uh, in this table, the uh, reported the standard for the protection of health for the pollutant that I have uh, cited previously. Let's see that for the PM10, so the particle matter that have a diameter less than 10 micrometer, we have a limit value for the daily for the daily limit value is 15 microgram per cubic per cubic meter. For the annual limit is 40 microgram cubic meter. Uh, instead, for the PM 2.5, we have a limit uh, a daily uh, an annual limit of 25 microgram cubic meter. Let's see the nitron uh, the um, nitron oxide that uh, is uh, a limit for is an hour limit, and we can see that uh, this limit is 200 microgram per cubic meter. Instead, the annual limit is uh, 40 microgram per cubic meter. So in this table, I reported the all limit for all pollutants that I have shown before, and also for the uh, metal. Uh, toxic metal like lead, arsenium, uh, cadmium, and nickel. Uh, in this table, I have reported the World Health Organization air quality guidelines, and you, you can see that for the PM10, uh, there is a, a daily limit of 50 microgram per cubic meter. Instead, for uh, the annual limit is 20, is more restricted than the one the, that I have shown you uh, that are proposed to the um, to the ambient uh, air quality directives. And also for the PM 2.5, we can see that the daily is 25, five, and for the annual limit is 10 microgram per cubic meter. So what? Where is a pollution a problem? Uh, you can see that there are a dot point, and the dot point means that we have um, the the value is above the limit that the uh, directive proposes. So we have a concentration of PM10 more than greater than 50 microgram per cubic meter. And uh, um, the concentration of PM10 and all the other pollutants are measured by the stations that are put inside the countries, and they can uh, be uh, urban, rural, and suburban. Suburban and rural. Um, and the EEA, so the Environmental, uh, Environmental Agency, uh, detect, collect all the data and uh, made this kind of maps to see what, where is uh, the problem. And at least one station is with the values above PM10 annual limit value. I remind you that uh, annual PM10 value, limit value is 14 uh, microgram per cubic meter. The, um, instead, here there is uh, uh, there are uh, PM10 concentration in relation to the annual limit value in 2017, and also uh, you can see a dot line in red that are the guidelines uh, proposed to the World Health Organization, and. Um, uh, the stricter value of the PM, the, of the, um, the stricter value of the World Health Organization is 20 microgram per cubic meter, and we have 51 percent of the um, the strict value of the World Health Organization um, mean was exceeded at 41 percent of the station. This is the situation for PM10. Instead, for the PM2.5, we have that seven stations of the member states uh, are above the annual limit proposed to the, um, to the uh, air quality directives. And we can see also here the difference between the two limits. And more of, these, uh, of the countries are above the 
uh, guidelines proposed to the World Health Organization uh, respect to the uh, guide, the limits proposed to the uh, air quality directives. And also in this case, uh, for the PM 2.5, we have uh, uh, 79% of stations that are above the limit proposed. The same thing, let's see, uh, let, let's see to, for the dioxide, nitrogen dioxide. We can see there are more uh, dot red dot and it means uh, that uh, we have there is still a problem and 17 European member states are above these limits and in this case the 10 percent of station uh, station are uh, above these uh, red guidelines So let's see what is the percentage of the European population in the European Union exposed to air pollutant concentration. We can see that for the pollutant, uh, for the PM10, uh, in which the um, limit value was uh, the annual limit, the daily limit value is 15, we have an urban population exposure of 13, uh, 13 19 percent. Instead, if we see the guidelines proposed to the, um, the WHO, we have a population exposure estimate between 42 and 52. So we have more uh, population exposed because we have a limit more restricted. The same things we can see for the PM 2.5. We have a new population exposure between 6 and 8. And, uh, also, for the well, instead for the WHO, uh, we have an exposure estimate between 74 and 81 percent. So let's see what we can do uh, to do the best. Almost 80 percent of the energy used in the uh, European Union household is for eating and hot water. And uh, uh, also emissions from residential heating are going down. They are still a major source of air pollution. For example, to reduce the PM10, we can implement cleaner industrial processes, boosting energy efficiency for by refurbishing buildings. Uh, we can, uh, um, for the city, uh, you can, we can using heat from existing industry or renewable energy sources. Sources. We can promote um, substitution of old and dirty stoves and boilers with clean models. With clean models, and also the problem is the urban transport. So we can uh, implement uh, public transport such as electric buses and trams, and the new Euro Six. Another uh, mode to reduce, uh, for example, the pollution due to the nitrogen or dioxide is to, uh, for example, implementing always, um, always clean industrial processes and also to put traffic restrictions as, such as low emission zone, reduced speed limits and congestion charges, also to improve bike sharing, the uh, our, um, as uh, Valerio said in the previous uh, presentation, and also use cleaner transport such as cars or bus, uh, buses, for example, and electric buses and trams. So, um, more action is needed uh, the, uh, to encourage the switch to cleaner fuels and more efficient eating. Also, this is a benefit for the climate, but also for our health. For example, with this kind of practice, best practice, we can reduce our diseases. So, uh, also we can, uh, with cleaner transport, reduce scars, so fumes, so which irritate the eyes, nose, and throat, and can cause lung cancer. Uh, less ozone pollution is better for our lungs and earth. Renewable energy and city of visitating significantly reduce local air pollution. 
um, so let's see. Um, do you have any more slides, or Sorry. we can start with the uh, with the questions? Oh, we can start with the questions. Uh, thanks. Okay. If so uh, while the, the, the participants, of course, uh, you can write your questions in the, in the question window, like we did for the previous speech, and while they will leave a few minutes, like for to write, I would like to ask you um, about some. You know, this air, air pollution right now in Italy is very, pop, very pop, pop, popular on newspapers because we had a uh, few weeks uh, without rain in most of the Italian territory. And there are a lot of, uh, I mean, a lot of questions about uh, which is the most, uh, the most important source of air pollution. Let's say there are some people uh, who talk about the urban the, the, the mobility, the urban mobility? Some others who uh, talk about the, like you already showed the, the stoves, the heating systems, the old heating system, biomass. Um, what do you think? I mean, uh, because probably the the heating systems are old and they need to be renewed. So, with new heating systems, we will have a, a significant improvement, or or not? What do you think about the, the, most, the most important source sources of pollution? Okay, I show you that uh, in this table, in this figures, I have shown you the main contributors that uh, are. The first of all is, yes, of course, the urban transport, but uh, is the fuel that we use. And also the heating is uh, the problem. So the best way is to remove the old stoves and uh, we can substitute them with others, uh, with others. So the problem is the urban transport, of course, so a urban road, but also the heating. So the best way is just to replace the old one with the uh, the, uh, with the, uh, the new one, I can uh, so you can see in the figures that uh, for the, um, the the for the nitrogen oxide the main contributor is the road transport and the percentage is 39 percent. You can see. Thanks a lot. Uh, I don't see any more questions about that. So. I will again tell the participants that if they have any questions uh, after this webinar, they can write to, to our emails and uh, we will send the questions to the speakers and we can the answers straight, straight away. Uh, we both, pre both presentations shown today will, will be available on, uh, on the project web page. And um, uh, we remind you that, that uh, next Thursday, the 23rd of January, we will continue with the other two webinars about waste management and water water. So uh, you can re you can re register from our web website, on the web page of the project. And so uh, we will. Uh, we hope to have you again here for the, on Thursday for the other two weeks. Thanks a lot to everybody. Thank you, Valeria, for your speech. Very interesting. And uh, I will close the webinar the, the now. So we have finished and wish everybody a very nice day. Thanks. Thank, thank you. Thank you a lot. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. 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 B